Okay, so today I'm going to show you exactly how I made this fairly complex looking bot in BotPress for an e-commerce diamond site, which also dynamically recommends products and embeds the image of price and link to the product in the card in the chat box. So stick around to the end of this video and I will show you exactly how I built this chat bot. Okay, so let's go to main and I will go over exactly how I built this. Basically we have, we have a greeting card. So I always like to do a greeting card before and then we have a standard choice. So the, the, these are the different flows that you will set up for whatever e-commerce site. So take these out and put in the, the different product categories. The main categories really are wedding rings, engagement rings, diamonds, and I've also added in a delivery status. So this is where a customer can actually check up on their delivery date. So let's just go over this main. So we split these up and I split these into their own flows. We'll look at that later. And then we do the first knowledge check. So this knowledge check takes a question and saves it in a variable and raw input. I then execute the code. So I'm not using bot presses inbuilt knowledge bases I'm using my own because they tend to be a lot better. So I'm sending it to Flowwise and I, let me show you how this is done. So it's a pretty simple endpoint. You just put your Flowwise input here and then you put your input and you can get that from here. If you come to JavaScript, you'll see the sort of the JSON input that you need to send it. So it's question and then followed by the string. So what I did to get a general knowledge of the entire site is I came here and I just did a pinecone upsert. So forget about the CSV file at the moment. This is for later. Basically, you have imagined this Cheerio web scraper is here. You just put in the URL so that it would be Belgian diamonds and then come here. And then what you want to do is do a web crawl. And if you want to get the whole site, because this will only do a few links, right? You hit zero. So this actually will take some time. And if you've got a big site, you've got to be careful because you might pay quite a bit in OpenAI embeddings, but this will go and it will scroll the entire site for you. So this is what I did. And then upsert it into a pinecone database. So let me show you my pinecone vector database so as you can see it's got 46,000 vectors and so it's got a lot of vectors and each of these vectors is like 800 words so it's quite a bit and what I have done here if you come to namespaces so this is how you actually split up your vector database I've put this all into just my first namespace that's why you can see it's got 46,000 so whenever I want to just have a general query on the website I come and I only query this namespace and let me show you how I do that so if you come here, so this is the chain that I'm using here. We come to additional parameters in your retrieval and then you put in your namespace name. So it'll only query it from that name. So then it gets a query. Then I, I do actually use BotPress's inbuilt query. So I'll query, this is a way you can manually query instead of just selecting on the node. So if you wanna check the response first before it responds to the user, you can do this. And then I just set up an AI task. So what I do is I take these two responses and I put these into an AI and so it used both of these responses from two different databases to write the best answer. So this is just if they get different things we can get all of that information and write a much better answer. Then I put that response and print that out to the user. So then this is where we do lead capture. So I want to capture their phone number. So we set up here so you set up the actual type of phone number and you put it into a variable. Now You've got to be careful here because if they don't enter into a phone number and they keep asking questions, uh, BotPress will keep asking them for their phone number over and over and over again. So you can come down here to advanced and hit retry. So I hit retry one, and this is the message that it will. This is the message that it will ask if it can't map the number inputted to the phone number, and then it will fail. So you've got to add transition fail, otherwise it will also break. So then it's sort of you just move it along. So let me show you how that works. Let's go for another question. What is, what is diamond clarity? So we're gonna go do our API call and then we're gonna query the knowledge base. And now it's running the AI task. And there we go. We've got diamond clarity. What is diamond? So it's asked us for our phone number. It can't map this to actual phone number. 
So it will ask it again, but if I, it will it will fail and it will move on. Now, if there isn't if there isn't a, an answer from the knowledge base, then I come to this 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 fallback. So if there isn't an answer from this knowledge base, you can do this fallback. So I haven't got it connected at the moment. But basically, if the knowledge bot doesn't return, or you can do an AI task to see if it's a sufficient enough answer. If it's not, you come back here, you do the same thing, you try and capture their phone number, and then you do the same thing with email and customer customer name, and then you pass that, pass that on to the next question. So I like to do these two sort of question nodes, and then this last question node just repeats, right? So what would you like to know? If you keep asking that every time this sort of question, it's like not proper, not proper English, right? So this is why the second question sort of asks, is there anything else you would you would like to help? And we just do the same thing. We execute the queued query knowledge base, get the best one. If they say no, so if their intent is no, they don't want to answer any questions, it goes to end. Otherwise, we just keep looping and answering their questions. This is just the simple, the general knowledge base checker. Now let's look at the delivery status. How do we actually check their delivery status? So let me show you how this works. So we come to this delivery flow and basically this delivery flow has a delivery knowledge base which is like this. So you can either have this as plain text, I've just done this plain text just to show, but what you'd probably want to do is instead of having a knowledge base you would send an API ping to the back end of the, the store. But I've just done this to, to show usability. So say I want to have a look at delivery status, it will ask me for the delivery ID, and then we can shove a delivery ID in here, and then it will tell me that it's been shipped and it's on the way to you. So you don't really need to do any authentication here because if a customer you know knows their delivery ID, it's going to be fine. Another customer isn't going to know some other customer's delivery ID, or that's going to be very difficult to guess. So you don't need to really do anything anything on here. And basically, yeah, you know, this is a knowledge node, but instead of having it as a knowledge base, you would just collect that delivery ID and send that as an API call, probably through Zapier, or if you can connect it to their Shopify backend. Now, let's go on to the main flow, and this is where we do the actual the product promotion here. So this does look fairly complex, but it's not really. It's just asking a series of questions. So let me actually just go through this very quickly. So basically, we're just breaking this down and you'll build out these custom flows depending on the business type and depending on what sort of questions you need to sort of ask before start recommending products. Or you could just cut this all out and just start re recommending random products. But that, to be fair, that's not going to be that helpful. So first we come, we ask for their budget. And every time we ask, we save it in a specific variable. So we save the budget. We ask them what sort of metal they would like. Would they like gold, platinum, both? And then we ask for if they want a fully set or custom ring or they don't mind. Or no idea, show me some options. So if they ask no idea, show me some options, we just come here and we just do some, we just find some random products to, to show them. But if it's fully set, custom or don't mind, we save that in the in the variable. And we keep doing this for you know diamond clarity, diamond color, diamond, you know, the carat of diamond the setting style, and on each one of these as well, because somebody might not know what diamond clarity is or diamond color is, we have this. So one of the options is diamond clarity question mark. On this, we pull down and we just do a simple knowledge base query on the main big knowledge base. You know, what is diamond clarity? And then we just return back to this question and ask it again. Do the same for diamond color, diamond carrot and setting style. So here is where the magic actually happens. So we have another flow-wise endpoint and we do this big question. So we, we set this variable and we create this big string. So please find the closest ring option to this type of ring. Budget, and then we just put in all our variables that we've set, you know, the custom set, diamond, the carrot, clarity, color, and then the setting style. And then we ping that off to our API. And I'll show you exactly how I connect that to their products in a second. I then take that that back. That usually just returns a bunch of text. So let's let me show you what that looks like. So this is my other flow. So if I just come here, rings. As you can see, it's sort of recommending me a bunch of products. So this is what it will sort of like come back with with a bunch of text. But to actually embed this in 
to actually embed this in a card, right, and show the image in the text in this chat box, we need to have it in a structured manner. So we need to be able to take out and put fill in these four variables, image link, description price, and link, right? So this is what this AI task does. You're gonna take a list of products and then you're gonna return the first product as a JSON. So obviously you can return multiple products and just have like a, you know, a, a, you can do one of these, you can have a carousel, but then you just have to do a different node every time, depending on how many, how many cards there are gonna be. So right now I'm just doing one card and I'm telling it to return only return a JSON, and this is the format I want it. The name, image link, description price link, and then describing what they actually are. And I'm gonna store that in a workflow.json, and then this second code, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this workflow.json, and we're then going to pass this, pass this JSON and take out every, all the, the data points, and put them into their respective, respective variables. So then, when we come to the card, Instead of what a lot of people are doing and just manually putting these in, we can now pass these variables into the title, price into the subtitle. We can pass the actual image link so it will go out and get the image. And then we can put, create a button saying go to and add the link to actually go and have a look at that product. So how does this actually look? Let me show you. So if we have a look at engagement ring, select our budget, or we can just type it in because it will be saved either way. Let's do 1200. Let's do both. Let's do custom. So custom actually skips over these diamond carrot color and setting style because it's a custom ring. You don't need to take those into it into account. Let's have a look at six prong. Not too sure why actually. So if you have a look at the JSON, the actual image link didn't populate through. Let's try that again. It's worked every other time. Okay, here we go. So I just redid these questions and there we go. So it pulls the image pulls the name, pulls the price, and it will give you a link to actually go to go to that site. And then I just do some capture as well. So we just do email, capture, customer name, capture phone number, and then we just start answering, doing some general knowledge-based questions here as well. So we can do find more rings, which will take it back to the start and ask the questions again. And if it's like another different question, we could take it to the general knowledge base and so on. And the key thing here as well, because the other uh, flow also captures email, phone number and customer name. I'm taking these variables and I'm actually passing them back into the flow. So you can see I'm passing email, phone number and customer name back into the flow. And this is super important. So here, skip if or variables already filled. So if there is a phone number here, it's going to skip. It's not going to ask them again. You obviously don't want to be asking your users multiple times for stuff once they've given it. So that's super important to do. So, so now I'm going to show you guys, so now I'm gonna show you guys how do we actually connect to the back end database. So what I've done for this, because I don't have access to the site's database, is I've just scraped these products manually. So if we come here, what we can actually do is we can use a tool called browse.ai, and this allows you to do a lot of things, but one of the things is you can create like a pre-built robot that will go and scrape data from a list for you. So let me show you how this works. So it's a Google Chrome program. We hit build new build new bot. Okay, so once you've logged in, created an account, we can hit start recording task, come to the menu, and we're gonna do capture list. So just hover over these list items, hit capture, and then we wanna capture the actual variable. So we wanna capture image URL, we wanna capture the name, we want to capture the price. We actually want to do visible text there. Then capture the link as well. And then hit enter. And then we want a name as well. So, so this will be link, name, and so forth or so forth. So I'll, you can do that. And then basically once that's done, it will go away, it will do it, and it will generate an Excel for you with just a bunch of lists. So you can take that into Flowwise like I have here, and make sure it's a CSV, so it will return as an Excel, then just convert that to a CSV, and then you want to upsert it into your document database like this. So, upsert the CSV, additional parameters, create an, a new namespace, so you want it different to your general namespace for the website, and then upsert that. Then I, I use a different, a different selector that is just going to get these rings, 
And that's pretty much it. So when we run this code, oh, and also I have a custom message as well, just making sure that telling it to return the image link, the description price and the main link as well. So that is pretty much it. So that is this code, this does, this hits that flow wise and grabs that. So you, you can do this in production a few different ways. So you can do it this way and put all those, put everything into a vector database and then query it that way. Or you can sort of go and, and do a different query, but this is sort of the best way of doing it because you've got natural language search. Let me just show you. So this is the this is what we actually send, you know, please find the closest ring to, to all of this and it will go away and find the correct product. So I hope this was helpful at least and has given you some more ideas on the types of the types of different solutions that you can actually build with with BotPress and, and Flowwise and all the other tools.